previously on Chicken Police Into the Hive. Let's just stick with the classics. It was a dark and stormy night. Well, it wasn't that stormy, but it was cluck and dark for sure. I woke up from a horrible dream among boxes that had my whole life in them. I was ready for the big journey around the wilderness. But a mysterious woman in a hood came to ruin everything. Sound familiar? And she came straight from the hive, fellas, with a case that looked like straight suicide. Did I take it? Clark, yes, because that's me, the perfect schmuck. Now all I had to do was get Marty, my partner, to back me up. But he strangely refused to pick up the phone. I wonder what could have happened to him. What the fluffy, feathery, scaly cluck and hell's going on here? Hey, buddy, are you all right? You hear me, honey? That's not how this works. No, no, it's not. Yeah, Marty. Hello, Marty. I've been drinking, right? That I'm drunk, huh? Marty. Hey, partner. Hey, buddy. Oh, goddamn featherhead. Tear me apart, Laura. Oh, no chance. I've got to get him out of this state somehow. It's a tidy little neighborhood and a tidy little house with probably tidy little neighbors. Neighbors who don't deserve this shit show. Marty's beloved Vectra Ball. Pretty cold of Laura to chuck that out, but it might just be useful. Good old Cobbett. He's seen better days. He rattles and clatters, but he won't give up. <laughs> Remind you of anyone? It's impossible to dislodge him. I have to distract him somehow. He's not gonna talk to me until I get him out of this state. hear 
me! Everyone is listening to us! Don't you care? <laughs> Ouch! Hey! Finally! Good evening, partner. What the... What the hell, man? Hey, Marty. Everything uh, okay, buddy? What? Of course it's you. Who else would it be? Are you, uh, by any chance, a little tipsy, Marty? You, 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 you just, just don't cluck at me about drinking here, okay? I didn't say anything. Well, don't. Because, because... Listen, Marty. All this stuff here. Yeah, Laura didn't, uh, she didn't throw you out, did she? What? Me? Ha! I can't be thrown out. I'm Marty Cluckin' McChicken. Did you hear me, honey? I can't be thrown out. Take it easy, Marty. Actually, I threw her out. Yeah? Yeah, sure. Let's, uh, let's get your stuff and get out of here, okay? Okay, boss bird, but promise us we're gonna do something stupid. Huh, that I'm sure of. Wait a minute. Just one tiny minute? Yeah. Marty, Marty, no! Laura! <sighs> Come on! Laura! <laughs> oh, for cluck's sake. Look, I got something in the car that'll help you. Here it is, my beloved flask. Contains a killer cocktail handed down to me by good old Dr. Bubo. Take a few deep breaths and everything will be fine. <laughs> Crazy clucking son of a chicken. Well. <laughs> Better? Yes. Lucky you. <laughs> well, there you go. But never again! Agreed. Shall we go? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Oh, and if you puke in my car, I'll pluck you and cook you alive. Yeah, yeah, let's just get out of here. That's my boy. I'd never seen Marty so dead drunk. It didn't bode well for the evening. I was just about to call the whole thing off, but after a nap in the passenger seat, he woke up innocent as a day-old chick. Fists, bullets, or booze, this damn cock dodged them all, but Laura hit the only tender spot he has, his overly large heart. 
We were standing outside the station, waiting for him to compose himself before going in. He avoided my gaze, and I didn't blame him. In over 10 years of working together, I've never seen him let himself get this low. Well, there's a first time for everything. Ah, uh, listen, man, I... Don't get started, Marty, okay? Just take a deep breath, and let's get going. Yeah, right. You just forgot to tell me what we're doing here. Well, I didn't want to wake you. You were snoring so sweetly in the car. Ugh, sorry. <laughs> right now, we need paperwork to enter the hive. Yeah, sure. Wait, what? You heard it right, partner. We got some business in Roachtown. Anyway, it'll give Laura a chance to cool off. Oh, clock in hell. Can we maybe not talk about that? Whatever suits you, partner. Listen, do you have a, an aspirin? My brain is trying to burst out of my skull. Nope. But if Monica's here, I'm sure she'll help you. Ah, good. She's always there when you need her, huh? Uh-huh. I just hope the old bone chewer won't be in. Blood boil? Uh, you know the dog that barks doesn't bite. Yeah, right. Just sends you on unpaid leave. Great police massacre. Rest in peace, comrades. Ah, all the friends we lost. Even Cluck and Phyllis and Royce. Shit, I never would have thought it, but I miss those two spiky bastards. Yeah, the Force won't get over that night anytime soon. Ah, Clawville is really on the brink, right, buddy? Yeah, sorry, Bossbert. Rest in peace, fellas. I hope things are a bit better on the other side, because it's clucking grim here. <laughs> Trust old blood boil to be so subtle. But a tank? Really? He's always liked big things. Eh, lucky for us. You're not wrong there. This poster is total lunacy. But maybe that's why, in a strange way, I like it. And with the state the city's in right now, maybe we do need tanks. If it isn't the chicken police in the flesh. The hands that lay the golden eggs, huh? Moses, Plato, evening, gentlemen. Now get lost. Marty's having a rough night. Everything all right, Marty, my boy? <laughs> you look like you've been swimming in the times. Or are you just juiced up? Ah, <laughs> oh, are you mewling at me, tiny tiger? I'm sorry, it's hard to hear you from up here. 
tiny what? What did you say? Please, don't do this, Plato. We're so much better than that. I can't believe I'm saying this, but yeah, Moses is right. Ah, okay. Whatever. Moses, Plato, the later the better. Indeed. It's been dead for years. Besides, Marty was the only one who drank that garbage. Ah, the great Moses and Plato. What a pair of clowns, just what we need. Never mind them, Marty. Ever since they solved that case on the Clawville Express, they think the world revolves around them. But they're still in second place. Can't be easy. <laughs> Yeah. Who's that guy? What's he doing here? He seems lost. Well, ask him. No cluck and way, just look at him. Well, maybe he's looking for you, an old friend of yours, a classmate from the Moron Academy. Ha ha ha. Ah, your sense of humor is getting old and rickety, just like you. Because I'm spending more and more time with you, buddy. Man, this place is starting to look like an asylum. Why? Just because he's scruffy and messy and smelly and has a weird sparkle in his eye doesn't mean he's crazy. I mean, yeah, he probably is. Yeah. Weird to see the front desk without Monica. It really is. I don't know if I've seen it empty since she's been working here. We should look into this mystery. Yep, we shouldn't, but we will. Yep. Feel you, brother. You look even worse. Thank you, dear partner. I can always count on you for support. And yet you haven't kissed me in weeks. Not even a peck on the cheek. There's nothing there for us now. Still smell her. Hmm, there's some almond, lavender, maybe some orange, and yeah, it's certainly some kind of exotic orchid. You're shitting me, right? Who? Me? Never! I was actually raised by wild dogs, so I developed a way to smell a thousand times better than normal chicken. Uh huh. Marty, buddy. Uh, yeah? Shut the clock up. Yeah, okay. Anything else? Ah, oh, for clock's sake. Next time, but not now. Hey, w wait, w what?
The building is just like the people who work in it. A complete wreck. Sorry to bother you guys, but have you seen Monica? Uh-huh. And can you tell us where we can find her? Oh, of course. You just have to ask. She went down to the shooting range. The shooting range? Monica? Are we talking about the same person? To be honest, I was surprised, too. Strange. Quite. Yeah, thanks anyway, guys. Have a nice standing around and doing nothing. Monica Rosen. A tiny, fragile body, housing a rock-hard woman with perfectly polished nails, a sharp beak, and an even sharper mind. She's a real machine, a workaholic, and a mother goose who always does what she has to do. And for us, she sometimes does a little bit extra. She's like an anchor holding a tiny boat in place on a boiling sea. So it genuinely surprises us to find her upset. Something must have happened. Oh my goodness, I'm in love. No, you're not. Pull yourself together. What could have happened to her? She's never been down here before. In fact, she's never left the front desk. And the gun? Yeah, but it's none of our business. We're detectives, Sonny. Everything's our business. Oh, that's quite a catchphrase. Yeah, I should have thought of that before, like a whole career before. Yep. Well, that ship has sailed. It sure has. Uh, someone here has a sophisticated sense of humor. I think it's pretty apt. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, wait a minute. It wasn't you, was it? What, me? <laughs> Don't make fun of yourself, Marty. It's uh, so childish. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm watching you, old bird. Yeah, leave me alone. I'm watching you. It's a pleasure.
You can do it. It was a pleasure. Hey, Mon. What's up? It's a little, uh, unusual finding you here. What? Uh, who, uh, me, me? Oh, no, it's nothing. I just, uh, I just, um, I just came down to chill out a little. <laughs> and it's already better. To chill out a little? Exactly. Yeah. Chill out. You know. Well... If anyone, I can understand. I spent half my life down here, but I've never seen you here, Mon. Especially... With a huge clucking gun in your hand. Oh, that? Oh, oh it's nothing, really. I've, I've just been under a lot of pressure lately, and I thought I'd give it a try. It felt pretty good, honestly. Amen, sister. By the way, you're looking a little ragged, Marty. Did something happen? <clears throat> to me? Oh, no, 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 nothing, just, uh... He's got a clucking hangover, Mon. Hangover? I thought you never drank. Well, first time at the range for you. First time at the bottom of the bottle for me. Looks like it's a night of firsts, huh? Fair enough. I'm not pushing. Thanks, Mon. Anything I can do for you guys? I assume you're not here to just chill out, right? Sharp as always, Mon. We were looking for you. Well, I'm here. So shoot. Do you happen to have an aspirin? Marty's pretty useless right now. Yeah, I've got a jazz band in my skull. I think a trumpet solo is playing right now. I have some in the medical kit at my desk. Come by whenever. 
Oh, thanks, Mon. Hey, Mon, what are sleuths number three and four doing here? You mean Moses and Plato? Don't be so rude about them, Sonny. They're professionals, and they're pretty decent guys, too. Okay. So what's the deal? What's this super-secret assignment from Blood Boil? Are we jealous? Ah, don't make me laugh. I am, a little. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's something really secret. I mean, it's not an official investigation. Wait, I thought shit like that was our thing. It is. I really don't know what it's about, but if you want my advice, forget about it. I'm afraid that's impossible, Mon. You're only making it more tempting for us. <sighs> At least try to be discreet, okay? We've got enough problems without having to deal with your shenanigans. Oh, we'll be quiet and discreet, as always. Like the wind. Yeah, more like a hurricane. May the big wild ones protect us. So what's up? What are you doing here at this hour? We could use your help, sweetheart. I'm at your service, boys. Ask away. So, uh, everything all right with you, sweetheart? It's uh, unusual to see you here. Sonny, guys, it's okay. Really, I'm fine. I'm just blowing off some steam. With a bunch of bullets? As you say, Marty. Well, uh, okay, Mon. Hey, Mon. Listen to this. Sonny is going on a trip around the globe. Oh, really? That's nice. Huh? He never told you? But... I thought you two were pretty close. Yeah, me too. But whatever. He's not gonna go anyway. Uh, w wait, w what? Yeah, that's what I told him. He's just Beacon, but he's staying anyway. He and Clawville are in a long and bad marriage. Exactly. Hey. I'm standing right here, okay? Yeah, okay. Oh, hello, Sonny. How are you? So, we need the papers to enter Roachtown, Mon. Furry heavens, Boss Bird. I knew this day would come, but so soon? What day would come? The day you finally get yourself killed. But why do you have to drag poor Marty into it? He's still so... well, he's... Not so young anymore, but he's still full of hope. Thanks, I guess. Sweetheart, we just have a case there, that's all. We can't do it from the outside. Why don't you ask that bug friend of yours, Frank? He's helped you out more than once, hasn't he? Uh, I think part of this is about him. He might have gotten himself into trouble. Again. And you think you're the ones the poor residents of the Hive need? This is important, Mon. I mean, this time, it really is. Mon? <sighs> Wild heavens. Okay. But you owe me one. Again. You're an angel. Oh, yeah. I am. I'll add it to the list. How does it work? I'll give you the permit at the front desk. But you'll need another detective to sign it as a witness, because you can't count on the boss's support. No problem. I got Marty. No, you're partners, so I need someone from the station who's not Marty, but equal in rank to you. Oh, okay. Maybe Boss Gorelli, the shaggy bone chewer. He had a tough case in the Calavera Hills. Some serious cat fight. You know he's got cat allergies, so he's on forced rest. Uh, well then, uh... There is no one left but... Moses. And Plato. You're like two eggs, boys, you know that? But, yeah, you're right. They're the only ones you can count on right now. Ah, chicken shit. Thanks anyway, sweetheart. Yeah, no worries.
head's still splitting. Just take this. Thanks, Mon. You'll be all right in a minute, you big chicken. Yeah, I hope so. Because right now I've got a feeling this is gonna be my last night. Hey, no cryptic prophecies, Marty. You're proved right too many times. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Hey, fellas. I heard you guys had some business in the Hive recently. There was a little incident, yes, but nothing too serious. Unfortunately... We went to ease some of the tension there, but it uh, didn't work out that way. What do you mean? Ah, we had the one and only Mick in custody, but he was released a day later for lack of evidence. Mick? As in, Mongrel Mick. Mick Castle, the head of the Cluck and Golden Fang Clan. Since you've let yourself out of the bag, Plato, my dear, Mick has been camping out in the Hive lately, because he thinks we couldn't touch him there. He's right about that. Well, unfortunately, the sly ape is, at the moment. The Hive is still off-limits, and since we don't have any incriminating evidence against him, He's untouchable. And paperwork. If you have it, you can get into the Hive, right? Wait. Why are you guys so interested in the Hive? Are you going to... Innocent curiosity, Moses. Nothing more. Well, well. Interesting. We'd better be going. Don't take any wooden nickels, boys. You're welcome. Hey, uh, fellas. <laughs> Glad you're, uh, you're still here. Well, well. I never heard that from you before, Santino. Make a note, because it won't happen again. What can we do for you, chickens? Oh, it's, um, just a little favor. We, uh, we have a, a small favor to ask. That's what I call a surprising turn of events. You're telling us. I'm not gonna mince words. We need your signatures for a permit. Ah, so you are going to the Hive. I thought so. You thought so. Listen, a friend of ours is in trouble. What kind of trouble? The life-threatening kind. That could be said of almost anyone in the Hive. Moses, please. We're both on the same team, right? Um, fine. But you owe us one. We're used to it. Those ain't just words, chicks. Once we help you, you help us. No questions asked. As Plato says. So, we got a deal? Ah, catch it. Okay, Moses. But I'm not gonna shine your shoes. Hmm. We'll see. Let me know when you have the paperwork. We will. That was easy. Too easy. We'll regret this, believe me. Ah, uh, they're gonna ask for something humiliating, right? Well, those two are competitive. They're not unprofessional. But they could put us in danger. Beyond what we already face? Exactly. Well, what's new? Our lives are a constant, needless, risk-taking roller coaster for which we get nothing but a series of scars and nightmares. Right. Here, 
Just get Moses and Plato to sign it and you're done. We can jive with this anywhere in the hive, hmm? <laughs> jive in the hive. It's just a piece of paper, Marty. It'll be useful once you've set the hive on fire and you need proof you had permission to be there in the first place. Nice. But the hive has its own life, its own rules. Its residents won't be impressed that you have a piece of paper issued by the Clawville PD. In fact, I wouldn't wave it in public if I were you. Understandable. Thanks again, sweetheart. You saved us, as always. Come on, it's my job. Well, no, but I'm happy to do it for you. You make my heart melt. Let's go before we have to call an ambulance. Take care of each other, boys. There you go, fellas. One scribble from you is enough, Moses, but you can sign it too, Plato. Eh, I'll pass. Let's see. Done. It was a pleasure. See ya, boys. Sonny. Huh? Yeah? We'll be keeping an eye on you. And don't forget, you're in our debt. Yeah, okay. Anything else? Nothing. Right now. Well, bye, fellas. Okay, so what exactly are we talking about? I get that we're snooping around the hive, but what about Frank? And where does Mick come into it? Just relax. We'll go up to my place and I'll show you. That's what she said. Ah, stop clucking around. This is big. You're about to see how big. That's what she said. Never mind. Ah, moron. Okay, but all joking aside, I'm getting tired of being the last to know what case we're working on. Well, someone's got to be last, right? Don't be a jerk, Sonny. All right. But you know, an hour ago, you weren't in any state for details. I know, but are you going to keep bringing that up? I hope that was a rhetorical question. Kinda. Okay, speaking of things left unsaid, what's the deal with Laura? She dumped you because he got drunk? And you got drunk because she dumped you? You know what, Sonny? You're totally right. Let's just keep our little secrets to ourselves. Suits me. Sometimes I feel like I have a boil in my brain named Sonny, bursting with macho pride, smothered emotions, and dangerous secrets. Because you read too much chicken shit. Yeah, right. A distant light. Inviting for the locals, I'm sure. But it makes my comb crawl. Just to look at that collapsing neon sign. Could this be the last light we'll see? Or the light at the end of the tunnel? Still, there's nothing we can do. The trail drew us here like insects drawn to the flame. We have to find out who's running this place and what she has to do with the disappearance of the bodies. Oh shit, I didn't bring Bertha. We might need her here. Your shotgun would only cause more trouble, believe me. This is not the hive it used to be, pal. Things have changed. Oh, cluck in hell. I feel like everyone's staring at us. Well, they probably are. You remember the rules, right? Yeah, I remember. No looking up, no looking down, no looking anywhere. We should have come with paper bags on our heads. If we're lucky, we won't be here long. But we need to talk to whoever's pulling the strings. 
the strings. I mean, the Spider Queen. Ah, we're so gonna die. Let's hope not. So what happens now? I guess we need to ask the locals where to find her. Ah, great plan. Go ahead, take the glory. You're not much help today, Big Bird. But I am amazing company. Huh, <laughs> sure. Hello, miss. Yes? Can I help you? We hope so. Can we, uh, get some directions? Well, okay. What would you like to know? But quickly, please, I'm... I'm expecting someone. We'll be quick, miss. We promise. Kala. My name is Kala. Miss Kala. What an exceptional name. So we're actually looking for the local, um... I mean, you know. We're looking for the Spider Queen. Miss Zaneda. Oh. Oh? Well... Well? You mean, you really don't know? We don't know if we know, if you don't tell us what we might not know. This is all hers. You mean, the joint? The joint? Uh, and the street, and the precinct, and everything. That sounds pretty serious. It is. You have no idea how much. Good to know. So, can you tell us where we can find her? You can find out everything in here, in the distant light. That's all I can say. Although, if I were you, I would avoid the place. In fact, the entire hive, for that matter. Please don't bother me any further. Farewell, gentlemen. I'm sorry, did we say something wrong? Goodbye, gentlemen. Oh, uh, yeah, we understand. Goodbye. Hey, big guy. Uh, yeah? Uh, tell me, uh, what's your name? Hank. Hank Hardshell. Are you an athlete, Hank? Uh, what? Well, that's a vector ball bat in your hand. Oh, that? What about that? If you're not playing vector ball, you shouldn't be waving that around. And we need to confiscate it. As my learned colleague says. <laughs> Did we say something funny? Aye, that's a good one. Really. Now listen here, you slimy. Take it easy. Let's start from the beginning. We haven't introduced ourselves. Do you know who we are? Chickens? Yeah, but that's not what I mean. Coppers, right? Chicken coppers. <laughs> I'm good at this. I like guessing games. <laughs> Can you also guess what happens if you don't give us that bat? Uh, I guess it stays with me. The law is the law, big boy. I don't make the rules. But if you don't give us the bat, we have to take you in. Okay, okay. So listen here, chicken coppers. This is the hive, in case you didn't notice. You don't have anywhere to drag me. There's no PD here. Or are we going to drive all the way to the centre of town so you can stick me in a cell and hunch over paperwork till dawn for a wee bat? Eh, uh, I didn't think so. What? How dare you? Okay, big boy. Fair enough. Take this as a warning. Ooh, oops. I just shit my pants, cluckers. Watch it. <laughs> You hear that? The collective buzzing of thousands of insects. What are you thinking, Boss Bird? I don't know. I, I feel like I 
I smell something in the air. Smoke and flames. Are you seeing the future? Or smelling it? I hope not. Yeah, me too. Yes? Anything else? That's all for now. Look, we really don't want to bother you. So why are you bothering me? That uh, slimy mountain of a guy at the door with a big bat in his hand. Oh, him? Mm -hmm. Yes, so what, what about him? Well, it's a bit difficult talking to him. It's like trying to have a conversation with a bowl of jelly. But you two seem to know each other. Him and me? What makes you think that? Well, it's just an assumption. You know, we're detectives. Ah, yes. That makes sense, I guess. So, uh, do you know him? Well, it's an exaggeration to say I know him, but, well, he's Hank. Yeah, Hank. He's a very handsome fellow for a uh, pretty lady like you. Pretty lady? Did he say that? Oh, yeah, he did. That huge, masculine body seems to hide a sensitive heart. And above all, a shy boy. Really? Oh, hush my heart. So we thought we'd help him out a little, to make the first move. <gasps> Can you? Would you like to talk to him in private? Is it that obvious? We're just humble detectives, ma'am. Well, if you could put in a word for me... We could try. Thank you. Thank you, detectives. Oh, it's nothing, miss. Our pleasure. Hey, Mushface. You again? What? No. We were just talking to uh, Miss Kalla when... Miss uh, Kalla? Huh? Yeah, the young lady. We couldn't help but notice that you're uh, eyeing each other. Who? Me? Uh, don't make me laugh, chickens. Ah, don't be shy, buddy. She's quite a lovely lady. Aye, she is. I mean, I suppose she is. We've uh, never spoken. What? Why, that's terrible. It really is. Something must be done about it. By all means. Yeah, you think so? Of course. The air is throbbing with chemistry. Don't overdo it. Listen, Hank, old bud. You need to strike while the iron's hot. Who knows if you'll get another chance? Well, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe you're right. Of course we are. Okay. I'll try to speak to her. Whew. You can do it, Hanky boy. <laughs> you can do it. That's the spirit. Get on it, you stud. I like it when things go well. You mean when we manipulate invertebrates? I just like to look at the bright side of things. Well, be happy in your little world of pink. Ha! <laughs> at least mine has colors. So, are you ready? Or should I say, are you chicken enough? Well, my head is still pounding, I'm nauseous, and I feel like this place is gonna kill us. Hmm. Now that you put it that way... Come on, old bird. It'll be fun. Maybe the adventure of a lifetime. And besides, you started the whole thing, didn't you? Huh. <laughs> True enough. Okay, Marty. Let's cluck and do this. The distant light. We've entered another world. Ruined. Run down. Alien. Yet strangely buzzing with life. Everything's different here. The smells, the sounds, the colors. As if the walls themselves were alive. I felt like a stranger, and yet it felt like home. There was something comforting about the place, even though I knew that the deeper we went into the hive, the harder it would be to get out. Was there poison in the air? Some intoxicating aroma that lured unsuspecting victims into its web. Well, it's time to find out. Ugh, it stinks in here. 
Clockin' hell, Marty. Pipe down, would ya? Can't you smell it? There's something in the air. Honey and poison. Just trying to be quiet, okay? We're strangers here. Okay, okay, I'm not a complete moron. I know when to keep my head down. You do? Yeah, I do. Sometimes. <laughs> right. Yikes. We don't want to end up like that. Oh, maybe it's just new wave art or something. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. The guy's all messed up. Careful, Sonny, or you'll end up just like him. Careful, Sonny, or you'll end up just like him. Hey, get out of my head. It's too late. I've seen everything. My condolences. Another door, another doorman. Same old, same old. The Spider Queen doesn't take any chances, huh? Makes me want to get in there even more. Hey, buddy. Huh? What the hell are you? We're chickens. That's enough for now, but say, kid, what's behind that iron door? For you, nothing. Well, if there's nothing there, we might as well check it out, right? What are you? Some kind of suicide, chickens. Mm, now that you mention it... No way you're gonna let us in, right? That's your first sensible sentence, bird. No, not a chance, so fuck off. Why don't we just mention Zanita's name? Maybe then he'll let us in. You think so? Oh, we'll get a free ticket to the other side. The other side of the door? The other side of living. Oh. A clean glass of tap water, my good man. I oh, see I'm dealing with real gentlemen here. There are two things I can't offer you, I'm afraid. One is clean, the other is water. Then what would you recommend on this fine evening, Mr... Ender. Dart Ender. Well, we have mead, and mead, and whiskey. But I wouldn't recommend that, so mostly mead. Well, that's quite a selection. What'll it be, Marty? Uh, on second thought, I'll give this one a miss. <laughs> my friend is teetotal today, and, well, mead isn't my cup of tea. But since we're here, maybe we'll have something else. And what would that be, amigo? Information. Oh, buzzy hell. So you are cops, after all. We never said we weren't. You want to get yourselves killed? Do you know who owns this place? You mean the Spider Queen. Well, it's going to take a little more than an eight-legged urban legend to scare us. You think I don't know who you are? Pretty much everybody knows, even if they'd rather deny it. But star cops or not, this isn't your league, boys. Sorry to disappoint. So what do you suggest, amigo? Honestly? <laughs> Get the cluck out and never look back. But knowing your reputation, that won't happen, right? We're the kind who need to be thrown out. It happens almost every day. I thought as much. So, for the fun of it, maybe I can help you out. But no promises. Then I'll take that as a promise. Well, you're that ever sour, obnoxious, loud-mouthed, insufferable, but still weirdly charming kind of character, huh? Exactly. <sighs> All right, ask me anything you want, but make it quick. How do we get down to the Queen? I guess that big metal door would be the way. There's a casino down there, but it's for VIP members only. For the big dogs, you know. I mean, not literally. There aren't any dogs here. What do we have to do to get down there? You just have to be interesting or significant enough. Simple as that. Clawville's most famous cops aren't enough? Here? In the hive? No, not really. That hurts. Sorry, boys. Any other ideas? Maybe ask Douglas, the pianist. He was a regular down there until he was banned for stirring up some shit big time. 
I don't know. You'll find a way. Use your bird brains. <laughs> don't be birdist. Don't be a hypocrite. He's not wrong. Shut up, Marty. What about that nice little cockroach? One of the Queen's guards. Quite intransigent fella. When I open the place, he's usually there. When I close, he's still there. It's like he never eats or sleeps. Could he be a robot? A uh, what now? I read it in Tomorrow's World Science Fiction magazine. You know, a machine being that lives forever. Please stop filling your already tiny brain with so much chicken shit, Marty. You... you're not my mom. Lucky me. Come on, what are you waiting for? Yeah, all right. Here we go. This Douglas fella, what else can you tell us about him? He's a bit of a loner and a drunkard, of course. He says he's a bar pianist, but no one's seen him play the piano in ages. He usually just stares at the thing and sighs. Ah, poor guy. Yeah, don't feel sorry for him. He's supposed to be a real scumbag. I don't know him personally, but I know he used to move in quite influential circles before he got this low. I see. Well, thanks, Bart. Hey, buddy. Hello? That's ah, hopeless. Yeah, but we need to wake him up somehow. Got any more of that miracle stuff, Sonny? You swallowed every last drop. Then why the hell are you still carrying that flask around? Because it means a lot to me. Uh, wait a minute. Who gave it to you? Yeah, that's enough. We got work to do. Leave me alone. Yeah, okay. Mm, fine. But the idea is good, Marty. We need something strong to bring him back to life. Next time, but not now. This Douglas fella is quite a drinker, eh? You guys are detectives or something? <laughs> well, you can see we're professionals. So, what does he drink? A flaming ginger honey spit, usually. A what about what now? But, uh, if you really want to wake him up, I recommend an extra double pepper slap. Oh, I can slap him without the pepper, buddy. That's not an issue. Then give me an extra double pepper slap. Here you go. On the house. The guy's all messed up. Uh, what? What? I'm like, what's that smell? That smell? It, is that a... An extra pepper double slap, I think. <coughs> Are you trying to kill me? If we really have to. Keep that nasty stuff if you want. I'm I'm sobered up from the smell of it. Okay, then we'll put it back. <coughs> Wait, I mean, if you already have it, then maybe just a sip. Sure, go ahead. <coughs> Everything all right, pal? Oh! Is his head going to explode? Huh, I'd like to see that. Ah, oh, that felt good. So, what the flappy hell do you want from me? And who are you anyway? You, you're not even insects. Eagle eyes, you know you're not an insect either, right? Of course, but, 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 but that's different. I live here. I was born here. I'm an honorary insect. Or, at least, I was one. Okay, Mr. Honorary Insect. Are you Douglas? Douglas A. Fry, at your service. And you are? Just two simple, innocent birds who want a word with the Queen. Oh, I see. Well, goodbye then. You're not going anywhere. Come on, you seem like a perfectly nice, normal guy. Would you mind helping two other birds in trouble? You know what? I, I like you, big white guy. 
but not you. Hey, thanks. You hear that, Sonny? He likes me and not you. I'll bring flowers to your wedding. I knew my good heart would take me to my grave. Okay, so, what exactly do you want? I knew my good heart would... So how do we get down to the Queen? I don't know why you want to die so badly, but it's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's an old code. Maybe it'll help. A code like in spy movies? If you say so. Well, let's hear it. Hey, not so fast, lad. You, you want something? You gotta earn it. Oh, for clock's sake. I if you can beat me at my favourite drinking game, I'll tell you. Sonny, over to you. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? What? You know, partner, it's funny coming from you after tonight's events. Hey, that was a one-time thing. Yeah, I know. It always starts with a one-time thing. If you're too much of a chicken to do it, maybe you can try my world-famous hive quiz. Or get lost. It's your call, but if you win any of my games, I swear I'll give you the super-duper secret password. <laughs> All right. Maybe we'll give it a try. That's not the right way. Yeah, if we're not battering rams. So, what's it? Now you're talking. So, are you ready? Dexterity and guts. That's the secret of this game. All right, let's do this. Kill me? What? Practice makes perfect, huh? Shut up, Marty. So, is that it? What's the secret code? The bronze beetle bakes a brownie before breakfast. Gesundheit. No, the bronze beetle bakes a brownie before breakfast. That's the code, you ducks. I see. You got that, Marty? Yeah, of course. Brown beetle breakfast 
barfing something. Uh, I'll write it down. Thanks for the help, old bird. Hey, I'm an honorary insect, not a bird. Now, if you'll excuse me, uh... <laughs> Good night, my sweet prince. Let's get the clock out of here. Where do you stand on bribery, pal? I don't know. You can try if you want. How much you got on you, Sonny? Not much. Five bucks, maybe. And you? Uh, about ten, I think. Well, that's fifteen already. Now, get the fuck out of here while I'm talking nice. We're not gonna talk our way through this one. We need another option. Another door, another door. Same old a spider queen does makes me want to get in. Don't lose your head. You know, I've read that some chickens can live after having their heads cut off. They What's up, meat sacks? Meat sacks, that's not nice. Your master is expecting us. Well what? I don't have a master. We don't need the tango, okay? We know all the dance moves. Yeah, the bronze beetle bakes a brownie before breakfast. What now? What what now? Just because you pulled a silly rhyme out of some drunken schmuck, I'm supposed to let you in? Ha! <laughs> Give me a break. But that's the way it goes, right? In movies and books and... Just get the fuck out of here while I click it nicely, okay? Listen, pal, if you don't want any trouble, you'll let us in. It's that simple. Am I supposed to be scared now? Ha! I eat little shits like you for breakfast. You eat shit for breakfast? What? Uh, okay, come on, let's do this. I'm gonna kill you, meat sack. Enough. That? was the queen. Costa, send them down. Yes, your highness. Okay, you got lucky, boys. Go down while I'm in a good mood. Thanks, bug boy. Hey, we don't use the B word around here. Am I clear? Okay, okay, let's go. Welcome, detectives. Shall we begin? The smell of cigarette smoke and cheap mead gave way to something else. An intoxicating woman's perfume mixed with a musty, lush aroma and the essence of expensive liquors. It was as if we'd suddenly descended into another time. We were standing in front of a throne occupied by a real queen, as if she'd just stepped off the canvas of an old painting. I felt dizzy. I'd been in some tough situations in my life. But this time, I shuddered. Would we ever get out of here with our feathers intact? Welcome to our humble abode, detectives. Humble? I have a different definition of humble. Mr. Featherland, we used to live in a huge castle outside the hive. Compared to that, this hovel is an insult. Well, an underpaid cop like me would kill for an insult like this. 
Come on, Mr. McChicken, don't be so modest. You've got a quaint little apartment in Harlow Street with a lovely wife. You should be proud. Wait, what? But how do you know that? Oh, no need to be frightened, gentlemen. But they call us the Great Web for a reason. We can feel even the smallest vibration of the city from our throne. Our silk threads are everywhere. Now we can sleep peacefully. It's the plain truth. And you, dear detectives, are in the truth business, are you not? According to the book. And to what do we owe the pleasure of your visit, gentle birds? We're looking for an insect that died, then disappeared. Ah, I see. Well, make yourselves comfortable. Look around, Snoop. I can sense your hearts beat a little fast. Calm down first, and then we can talk. You can sense our... but... We'll do just that. Thank you. Perhaps a tad extravagant. It's like they're looking at me. Ugh. They have too many eyes for my taste. Maybe after talking to Her Majesty, we'll be needing a couple of stiff shots. So, can we ask you a few questions? First, you have to answer us. Why are you so interested in the fate of a mere insect? Did it hurt one of your kind? Not at all, ma'am. We were hired by someone. A widow. Oh. So you're altruistic crusaders. Maybe we were just bored, ma'am. I've heard you boys have been stirring up a lot of trouble over the last two decades. Perhaps this time, you've delved too deep into the hornet's nest. You think so? We're certain. We'll see. If you don't mind, we'd like to ask you a few questions. Be our guest. We have nothing to hide. Appreciate it. That's quite a throne you've got there. Why, thank you. It was our late grandmother's 200 years ago. Whoa, wait, then how old are you? Do you think it's appropriate to ask such a question of a lady? For cluck's sake, Marty. Oh, yeah, sorry. But it is a really beautiful chair. <laughs> You're funny. We like you. <laughs> Thank the gods. What can you tell us about the current state of the hive? Did you come here with paper bags on your hands? Have you not seen with your eyes? Well, we'd like to hear it in your words. As you wish. Since the Segregation Act, our people are suffering more than ever. We are eating ourselves alive. You may think we're being figurative, but we couldn't be more literal. We're running out of flesh, of life, 
of soul. But before that happens, our patience will run out. The Segregation Act wasn't good for business either, right? <laughs> Correct. We don't want to be seen as the selfless Grand Dame or everyone's fairy godmother. No. We were running a thriving business. You mean a thriving criminal business? Call it what you like. It was blooming, but the blossom eventually withered. Now we are suffering like everyone else. The Hive is an oil barrel, detectives. And Clawville, a crazy old fool with a match in his hand. Is the barrel going to explode? And with it, the old fool. Well, thanks for your honest opinion. Not mere opinion. This is our future, gentlemen. Are you ready to go a little deeper? Oh, you mean you're going to interrogate us? That's one way of putting it. I prefer to call it a controlled conversation. Interesting. You seem like a rough, crude fellow at first glance. But underneath those ruffled feathers, you have a rather sophisticated soul. Well, thank you, ma'am. Especially the ruffled feathers part. Our pleasure. Well, shall we begin? I'd be delighted. Be forewarned, detective. What you learn here may shake everything you've ever believed in. You think I believe in anything? It seems your famous senses have failed you. We'll see, Mr. Featherland. This whole madness started with this petty little affair. Petty to the one who reads it in the paper. Less petty to the one who's getting shot. Clawville. The city of opportunity. The city of dreams. A bastion of tolerance and equality. A genuine shithole. You know, truth is a weird dame. No matter how loyal you are to her. She'll cheat on you in the end. The question is, are you gonna stay by her side? And if you do, what price are you willing to pay? <laughs>